It began again, quietly, almost too quietly. Just as the world was busy watching the skies for comets, asteroids and solar storms, something else slipped through the static. A faint but undeniable whisper from the stars, one that made seasoned astronomers freeze mid-analysis, and younger researchers look at their monitors with disbelief. The unmistakable pattern, a narrowband signal near 1,420 megahertz, flashed across deep space receivers. It lasted only a few minutes, but those few minutes carried an echo that had not been heard since 1977. The wow! Signal, that legendary anomaly first caught by the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio nearly half a century ago, had somehow returned. Or so it appeared. At first, no one wanted to believe it. The original wow! Signal had always been a ghost in the data, so strong, so deliberate-looking, yet never repeated. For decades, scientists speculated it could have been anything from a passing comet to an alien broadcast. Nothing ever quite fit. But now, as data from multiple observatories poured in, something uncanny became clear. The new signal wasn't random. It matched the same hydrogen line frequency and exhibited nearly the same intensity, duration, and strange, unmodulated tone that had baffled the world 48 years ago. But this time it didn't just appear in one telescope. The new signal, first detected in late September by the Allen Telescope Array in California, was simultaneously noted by receivers in Japan, Australia, and Chile. That global synchronicity sent shivers down the scientific community. Coincidence seemed impossible. Natural interference was ruled out within hours. And when the triangulated source was roughly traced to a moving object on the outer edge of the solar system, an object catalogued as 3I Atlas. Questions that had been dormant since the Cold War suddenly roared back to life. Was something or someone trying to make contact again? For context, 3I Atlas is a hyperbolic object, meaning it's not bound to our sun. Like the now famous Oumuamua and Borisov before it, it entered the solar system from interstellar space, moving at astonishing speeds of about 57 kilometers per second, roughly 35 miles per second. Discovered in early 2025 by the Atlas Survey in Hawaii, 3I Atlas was initially classified as a long-period comet with unusual spectral properties. It didn't behave like a typical comet. Its outgassing patterns fluctuated unpredictably, and its reflected light showed an odd, metallic-like polarization inconsistent with ice or rock. When the new wow-like signal was traced to a point in space that corresponded almost exactly with 3I Atlas's projected path, even the most sceptical astronomers began to murmur. Could an interstellar object, possibly artificial, be responsible for the most famous radio mystery in SETI history? In the late hours of September 29th, Recordings from the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder revealed the same narrowband frequency spike lasting approximately 72 seconds, the exact same duration as the 1977 signal. It was almost as if whoever or whatever had sent it before was deliberately repeating the same pattern, like a calling card from across time. The coincidence was too striking. To dismiss. A SETI research team described the moment they confirmed the match. It wasn't just that something similar was detected. The characteristics were nearly identical. The frequency drift, the bandwidth, even the signals rise and fade mirrored the Big Ears record. You don't just get that twice by accident. The world media caught on fast. Within hours, headlines blazed with sensational claims, aliens call back, 
while social networks spiralled with theories. But beneath the noise, real scientists were working frantically to verify the data. The hydrogen line frequency, 1420.405 MHz, is the universal channel of the cosmos. It's the natural resonance of neutral hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. Any civilization, human or not, would likely recognize it as the logical medium for interstellar communication. The first wow. Signal's appearance near that frequency had always fueled speculation of intelligent origin. Now its recurrence made that idea impossible to ignore. And then came another twist. The timing of the signal's reappearance coincided with a peculiar optical flare observed on 3 i Atlas by the Hubble Space Telescope. For less than a minute, the object brightened by nearly a factor of ten, then dimmed again. The data was puzzling. Natural explanations, sunlight glinting off tumbling debris or sublimating ice, failed to fit the light curve. The flare was too sharp, too symmetrical, and suspiciously aligned with the time window when the radio signal was received on Earth. That correlation sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Could the light burst and the radio pulse be connected? Was it a form of communication, a transmission of some kind, encoded in multiple wavelengths? Publicly, institutions like NASA, the European Space Agency, and the International Astronomical Union urged caution. They emphasized that extraordinary claims required extraordinary evidence. But behind closed doors, emails leaked from research circles suggested deep unease. One particular message shared anonymously online, allegedly from a member of the SETI Institute, read, If this correlation holds, we're not looking at random astrophysics. We're looking at intent. Intent. That word reignited a decades-old debate. Was the original WOW signal in 1977 an accidental byproduct of a natural event or a deliberate message we fail to understand. In that first incident, astronomer Jerry Amon famously circled the anomaly on the computer printout and wrote the word WOW beside it, a spontaneous human reaction to the unexplainable. For years, he maintained cautious skepticism, suspecting a natural explanation might someday emerge. But that never happened. Now, with an identical signal emerging in the era of deep space probes and AI-enhanced observatories, the mystery deepened far beyond his imagination. When data analysts compared both events side by side, the similarities were eerie. The modulation was steady and narrow. No Doppler shifts typical of Earth-based interference were present. The source direction was consistent with the constellation Sagittarius, the same general region of sky from which the original signal had come. But the new triangulation, refined through multiple observatories, pointed to a trajectory coinciding with 3 i Atlas's passage through that same region just days earlier. Had this interstellar visitor been following a predictable route, one known to whoever or whatever sent that message nearly half a century ago? In the days that followed, scientists across the globe pointed their instruments toward the object. Observations from the James Webb Space Telescope revealed an unusual reflectivity pattern across 3 i Atlas's surface. Certain panels, if they could even be called that, reflected light at consistent 90-degree angles, as though part of a geometric structure. Some researchers whispered comparisons to solar sails or metallic plating, while others dismissed those interpretations as pareidolia, human tendency to see patterns where none exist. Yet the coincidence piled higher. A team from the National Radio Astronomy Observatory detected brief, low-intensity echoes following the main signal. 
These echoes appeared delayed by precise intervals of ten seconds each, too regular for random noise. Some analysts speculated it could represent a binary code, though the sequence was too short to decipher. Others wondered if it was a kind of handshake, a way of testing whether anyone was listening. Meanwhile, Three-Eye Atlas continued on its course, moving sunward before slingshotting toward the outer planets. If it maintained its speed, it would pass near Jupiter's orbit by late November. The window to study it was closing fast. In an emergency session, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, UNUSA, convened a special panel to coordinate international monitoring. Private observatories, amateur radio operators, and even deep space listening arrays repurposed from decommissioned military satellites joined in. For the first time in human history, nearly every major antenna on Earth was tuned to the same frequency, listening for the same whisper. But as the days passed, the signal did not repeat. Not yet. The world held its breath. Then, on October 3rd, at 2.41 at pre-dawn, a faint resurgence was detected, this time from a position trailing Three-Eye Atlas by several thousand kilometres, a few thousand miles. The transmission was weaker, but carried the same unmistakable hydrogen signature. Only this time there was modulation, subtle variations in amplitude suggesting some form of structure, almost like a code layered within the noise. It was enough to ignite the wildest theories. Some researchers proposed that Three-Eye Atlas wasn't merely a natural object, but perhaps a fragment or probe linked to an ancient civilization travelling between stars. Others speculated it could be an autonomous beacon, activated only when it approached systems harbouring intelligent life. Still others, more cautious, wondered if it was an elaborate cosmic coincidence amplified by human expectation. Yet even those sceptics couldn't explain why the signal repeated after forty-eight years, or why it aligned so perfectly with an interstellar visitor now inside our solar system. As debates raged, one observation stood out. The original wow. Signal in 1977 had come from the direction of Sagittarius, near the galactic plane. Now Three-Eye Atlas's trajectory, recorded from multiple observatories, appeared to trace back toward that same region. If this object had originated from that zone of the sky, the implications were staggering. It would mean the source of the mysterious broadcast, separated by nearly half a century, was not random at all. And if that's true, what, or who, is sending it? For now, the silence endures. Three-Eye Atlas is already receding into the black beyond Jupiter, and soon even our most powerful telescopes will lose sight of it. But humanity's eyes and ears will remain fixed on the stars, waiting for the next whisper, the next impossible pattern in the static. Because after 48 years, the universe spoke again. And this time, we might just be learning how to listen. If this story fascinated you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Deep Space Mysteries. And tap that hype icon so you never miss the next cosmic revelation that could change everything we thought we knew about our place in the universe.